Thank you, Father. Good evening, everybody. It's good to be with you. Um, I'm very happy that we're able to hold this workshop again this year, even though we can't be together in person. Uh, obviously, the pandemic has changed a lot of things, but you know, it's still important that we gather and support each other in faith and in our ministries. And I'm very, very grateful to Father Kramer and Father Miller and uh, their colleagues who helped to organize uh, this year's workshop. I, I pray that all of you will find it to be uh, another valuable experience for you. I, I just would start with a little bit of background information about myself. Um, I think the simplest way to start off is to say that I love music. Music has been a part of my life, all my life. Uh, I kind of came from a, a, a somewhat musical family. I started piano lessons when I was either in third or fourth grade, and my dad was actually my first piano teacher. Um, I still, I, I, I've never stopped playing. I still uh, play the piano as often as I can, at least a few times a week. As a matter of fact, poor Father Kramer and Father Miller live uh, just right above the room where the piano is at my house. So they have to put up with my pounding all the time. They can usually tell what kind of a day I had by the way I play. I also uh, started to play the trumpet when I was in grade school. I was in seventh grade. So I played in our grade school and our high school band. So that was another kind of musical experience for me. When I was in high school, I sang a couple of years in the high school chorus. Um, I was, was in the, the musicals. Uh, when I went to the seminary, I really got involved with choral music. Um, I was uh, a member of the seminary choir. Eventually, I be, even became the choir director, uh, studied a little bit of organ as well. So I would say that that was really where sacred music became an even bigger part of my life and, and has been ever since. It really heightened my appreciation for music in the mass and the celebration of the mass as well. You know, uh, music has the power to lift the soul, to lift the mind and heart out of ourselves. Uh, music is a manifestation of beauty. And we're made for beauty because we're made for God. We're made to abide in his presence. And I think that's kind of the, the point of departure that I'd like to start with, just this whole notion of beauty. Sacred music is and should be always um, an experience of beauty for those who worship. I suppose to, to some people, music and, and art in the life of the church might seem somewhat superfluous, you know, especially in view of the the challenges that we face in our world, in our own uh, families, in our parishes too. You know, people are experiencing illness, people are struggling to get by, you know, threats of war and terror around the world and attacks on human life. And it would be easy to say that all this is, is just trivial. But when you think about it, all people, no matter who they are, seek beauty. And we're all drawn to beauty. It's a universal. And it's really essential to human experience, as long as we understand that notion of beauty correctly. One of my favorite theologians is a, a Swiss theologian by the name of Hans Urs von Balthasar. And he did a lot of theological work in this whole area of beauty. His greatest work was called The Glory of the Lord. It's a theology of beauty in, in uh, Catholic theology. And he has a statement that I think we could all meditate on. He says, every experience of beauty points to infinity. Every experience of beauty points to infin infinity. Maybe we could even say points to God. Every experience of beauty points to God. And then there's another quote that I would like to share with you. And this is from a, a Russian author. Some of you might have read Dostoevsky. And he says this, when truth and goodness are banished from society, beauty will save the world. That's a pretty strong statement. 
seems nowadays though that it's kind of coming true at least partially because in so many ways in our society and our culture truth and goodness are being banished you know there's like a, an intolerance for claims of truth or uh, or of anything that is objectively good but that leaves beauty still there which can still attract even the most hardened of hearts and that means that beauty isn't just uh, an abstract concept for the idle rich or those who don't have anything better to do. Beauty really has an impact on all of us. And I would say the lack of beauty also has an impact on us. For us, beauty is a, a theological datum. It's a given. It's a manifestation of God. It's a way to God. This was emphasized in a, a very powerful way by Pope John Paul II. He wrote an apostolic letter to artists, which encompasses a whole range of people in, involved in the arts, including us musicians. So he really emphasized this value, the centrality of beauty, but even more so, this was emphasized by Joseph Ratzinger, who of course became Pope Benedict XVI. He was a great theologian, still is, and he said that some artistic expressions are real highways to God, the supreme beauty. Artistic expressions are highways to God. You might be aware, just incidentally, that Pope Benedict is himself a musician. He's a pianist. He, he loves to play the piano. There are even videos of him playing the piano on the YouTube. So if you're interested, you could probably find one of those. But Pope Benedict identifies God as the highest, the ultimate beauty to which all are drawn. And this beauty is manifested most perfectly in the person of Jesus Christ. You might remember some of the words of, of St. Augustine in his confessions. He says, late have I loved you, O beauty ever ancient, ever new. Late have I loved you. Well, he was speaking to God, of course. He identifies God as beauty ever ancient, ever new. And then he goes on, he says, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So we yearn for beauty because we yearn for God, who is the most perfect beauty. As Augustine tells us, we were made for God and we're restless for the beauty which is God himself. So I think that gives us a context for what we're doing here as musicians, as ministers of sacred music. We're recognizing that what we do leads us directly into the presence of God. Pope Benedict also describes the beauty of Christ. If you ever get a chance, there's a beautiful essay that he wrote called Wounded by the Arrow of Beauty. And he's talking about this paradoxical beauty of Christ, even Christ crucified. He says, whoever believes in God, in the God who revealed himself precisely in the distorted figure of Christ crucified, as love to the end, knows that beauty is truth and truth is beauty. What he's saying is that even the terrible image of Christ crucified is an image, a powerful image of the beauty of God. And when we gaze on that image, we're seeing the beauty of God's love. Then Benedict goes on and he says this too. He speaks of created beauty, the arts, music, like what we're involved with. He speaks of created beauty as a theological reality, a way to God, a way to truth. And I want to read a, a sentence from him that I think is very, very important for us to remember, both as Catholics, but also 
as ministers of the liturgy, as ministers of music. He says this, the true apologetics for the Christian message, the most persuasive proof of its truth are the saints on the one hand and the beauty that the faith has generated on the other. Just think about that for a second. Pope Benedict is telling us that the best case, the most persuasive case for our faith is the lives of the saints on the one hand and the beauty that is generated by our faith on the other hand. Beauty is an apologia for faith. It's a case for faith. He speaks of this in a, a kind of a concrete way. His love for music comes through a lot. He says, he uses the example of uh, a music or a concert of sacred music by Bach. He says, anyone who has heard this knows that the faith is true. And here again, we see him telling us, beauty conveys truth. In other words, the beauty of sacred Christian music has a power to touch the soul and to convey the truth and the goodness and yes, the beauty of God himself. So there's something very, very powerful in the place of beauty in our Christian worship and just in our lives as followers of Christ, as believers. Because we always come back to that phrase of Augustine, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. So beauty is kind of my first observation or theme for this, for this little talk. But secondly, I, I, would, I would offer this to you. You know, many of you have heard me speak of the importance of evangelization, which is the proclamation of our faith, the proclamation of of the good news of the gospel and really the whole mystery of our faith life. The work of evangelization has been put front and center into the life of the church. And Pope John Paul II called for a new evangelization. That's his phrase. A renewed proclamation and living out of our faith of the gospel in places where the, the, the faith has already been proclaimed but where perhaps it's grown tired or has faded away. John Paul is calling the entire church to really engage in this mission, to, to embrace in a new way the mission of evangelization. His predecessor, Pope Paul VI, said, the church doesn't have a mission, the church is a mission. And now in our own time, Pope Francis has taken the ball and run with it, you might say. One of his very first teaching documents was called The Joy of the Gospel. And he's really urging, not just urging, but, but calling upon all of us as Catholics to embrace the mission of evangelization. Uh, friends, I, I think you probably know what I'm getting at. Our ministry of sacred music is right at the heart of that work of evangelization. As a matter of fact, I think sacred music has an absolutely central role in the work of evangelization because it has such an important place in the liturgy, which is the public worship of the church. Sacred music has an amazing way of communicating the presence of God, his beauty, God's beauty, and his good news. As a young priest, when I was in my very first assignment uh, back in the Diocese of Lincoln, I was visited by a lady one day in my office and she just had, had called and asked to see a priest and I didn't know her, but she came and visited and we talked for a little while. She wanted to become a Catholic. And I asked her, I said, well, what has drawn you to the church? Why are you interested in the Catholic faith? And she said that she was a teacher and she used to take groups of students on trips to Europe. 
And she said on one of these trips, they were in Paris and they visited the Cathedral of Notre Dame, which as we know, tragically experienced a, a terrible fire a year ago. But she visited the Cathedral of Notre Dame with her students. She said, I had been there before, but when I came into the cathedral, mass was being celebrated. And there was a beautiful children's choir that was singing for the mass. And she said, I knew immediately when I heard the music, when I observed the reverence of the prayers, when I looked around at the beauty of the cathedral, that I wanted to be part of this. She said, I just immediately felt in a way I had never felt before, I have to be part of this. And she especially talked about how the, the children's choir caught her ear and really kind of drew her in. She felt drawn to approach closer uh, to the altar and to really take part in what was going on there. And she did, she eventually joined the church. She was received into the church the next year at the Easter vigil. It really was a beautiful testimony, I think, to the truth of what Pope Benedict says, that the art, the beauty that is generated by our faith is a great apologetic for the faith and has this power of drawing others into the experience of faith that we've received. Sacred music also has a power to really convey the message of the gospel, to make it known. And I just want to use a, a couple of examples that I think will probably ring true with you. You know, just think of some of the most popular Christmas carols that we know, um, Silent Night or Joy to the World. You know, even a person who goes to Mass once a year and hears those hymns, those carols, knows what they're about knows the words, knows the truth that's being conveyed by that sacred music. In a similar way, if you go to Mass on Easter Sunday and you hear the hymn, Jesus Christ is risen today, you know, this exuberant, joyful hymn of, of praise for the resurrection, you know what the truth is behind it. You know that it's a proclamation of the resurrection, the new, the, the new life, that Jesus experiences and that we experience through him. It's a triumphal hymn. And it's one of those pieces of music that just stays with you. The, the, the melody conveys the meaning, the, the message, and of course the words do as well. Some of the Eucharistic hymns that we sing all the time, Humbly We Adore Thee, Gift of Finest Wheat, um, Tanto Marigo, the uh, with so many others as well. These are all examples of common sacred music that conveys the message of salvation. It makes the, the, the meaning, the truth that we believe resonate even more deeply in the human soul. You might have heard this said before, musical impressions are lasting impressions. And I would say that that's doubly true of sacred music. Music can also join us together. You know, there's something wonderful about joining together with the faithful as we um, sing exuberantly or even solemnly a hymn of our faith. It helps us to deepen our experience of the truth of our faith. It helps us to reflect on the truths of our faith. And this again, this is all, I believe, part of evangelization. It's a way for us to help the truth to sink in to those who are participating. Maybe even those who are just listening and not singing along. That too is a way that we can deepen our experience of the faith where through the music, through the sacred music and, and the truths that they convey, the gospel sinks in more deeply and abides in our hearts. Each one of us is a minister of the faith. We're a minister of the music that is celebrated or that is, that is 
uh, share in the course of the liturgy. That means that we're also ministers of evangelization. The word minister comes from the word minor, which means a little one or one who serves. So a minister is a servant, and we, as ministers of music, are servants of Christ first. Certainly, we're servants of the liturgy. We're also servants of our brothers and sisters who are present at the liturgy with us. The music serves the liturgy. It serves the gospel. It serves the people of God. The music itself, it's not an end in itself, but it has a purpose. It has a purpose. It can, it can profoundly draw people into this great mystery that we celebrate. I would dare say, too, that music has the power to, to maybe push people away. We have to be honest about this. We have to choose music carefully. We have to prepare it carefully. We have to always ask ourselves, does the music that we celebrate in the liturgy, does it serve the liturgy? Does it serve the gospel? Does it serve Christ and his church? Or is it something else entirely? That also always needs to go into our reflection on how we prepare and how we celebrate music in the liturgy. Through the experience of sacred music, I think we experience something of the glory and the beauty of God. We also convey the glory and the beauty of God to others. I think you could say that each one of us as a, a minister of music, we're all instruments in the hands of our master, our Lord. When he chooses to use us, to work through us, he is able to touch the hearts of many, many people. I think often of the motto of St. Ignatius of Loyola, ad maiorum dei gloriam, to the, glor to the greater glory of God. And maybe that could be our motto, our hope, that in our work as ministers of music, we give greater glory to God that we experience the beauty of God and that we share the good news and the beauty of God with others. I'm so glad to be with you this evening. I'm so glad that you've tuned in, that you've signed on for this workshop. And I hope that it really is an experience of grace for all of us. God bless you. Thank you.